when you focus on the breath, think of the Buddha's image of the cook. Try to notice what its master likes. The master likes salty food. Okay, you make more salty food. He likes sweet food, you make more sweet food. In other words, try to give the mind what it needs right now, what it wants right now. The whole point of concentration is to get the mind to want to settle down. And to give it a topic that it can stay with. And think about John Lee's variation on that, that image. He says if the cook fixes the same thing day in, day out, day in, day out, the boss is going to go look for a new cook. So see what the mind needs right now, what it would like right now. Try to give it some variety. Because our life here in the monastery doesn't have much variety. We have our duties that we do every day, every day. And some days we feel like it, and some days we don't. And you've got to learn how to make yourself want to do the duties. Remind yourself this is a good thing. Where would you be if we didn't have the monastery? You'd be out having to work for some boss who's a micromanager or crazy or playing mind games on you. But here you have the Dharma, and you have the opportunity to look after the monastery, which is something that belongs to the Sangha. The Sangha has been in existence now for 2,600 plus years. We're taking care of it to pass it on, which is good work. It may seem like drudgery, but it's not work that demands a lot of your mental capacity, which means that you can meditate while you work. You can focus on the breath. You can be with a sense of well-being inside. And the work doesn't interfere too much with that. If you have to be out in the world and have work that does interfere with the meditation, you'll learn how to take some breaks every now and then. So you can back, get back in touch with the breath, get back in touch with the mind. Keep the mind nourished. You have to realize when you've let the mind get into a bad mood, there's a lot you can do about it. And you have to ask yourself, why would you let it get into a bad mood to begin with? There's a part of the mind that likes bad moods. It likes to complain. But Ajahn Mahabhu in particular points out how complaining accomplishes nothing. Right complaining is not part of the path. Conviction is part of the path, persistence. An important part of persistence is generating desire, lifting up your mind. So you'd be happy to do the duties of the path. The John Cha says to feel like doing it, you do it. If you don't feel like doing it, you do it. But that's too simple. If you don't feel like doing it, how are you going to make yourself want to do it? That's the that's the trick. That's what you've got to learn. It's in that way that you would learn how to develop your own discernment, figuring out the part of the mind that is resistant to the path. And how to get around it, how to convert it. In other words, learn how to deal with your own psychology. You can do it. People have done it in the past, and it's something that can be done. Don't let your moods overcome the mind. Make sure that your right resolve overcomes your moods. That's when you've got things in the right priorities.